All right. So um, yeah, let's quickly you know work on something very simple. I'm going to I'm going to create. Let me see my browser. I'm going to open a, a new browser tab. All right. Okay. So on the browser tab, I am simply uh, going to open up um, the index.html, right? So index.html uh, right here. Okay, good. So now that we have this open, let's, um, let's create a very simple card and then let's adjust the size of that card, you know, when you're on mobile or you're on the web. So I'm going to put, I'm going to inspect the elements, right? So I'm sure you know what I'm doing here, you know, inspect elements so I can have you know, different uh, uh, phone sizes and I can test with that. I'm going to select responsive so I can automatically adjust this, right? Okay, so let me also increase this, nice. All right, so for, for, um, for you asking, uh, I think I can also put this here. Unfortunately, my screen size is not, um, I'm using a Mac, so it's not that big from my end. Uh, so what I might do is, um, yeah, I might end up having the style in here. So we'll work with the style in here. And I believe you can see it side by side. So let's assume, you know, we, we have a card, right? Uh, we have a card and, uh, you know, this is going to, we're going to call this card. We're also going to have what we call a card group, you know, so the D um, the card group. Uh, card group. Okay. So um, within the card group, we have three cards, right? Three cards. And uh, you see, well, the, way, the way I think about implementing this stuff, I'm actually focusing on the, um, trying to understand what I want to do. So we have, you know, like, um, we have, uh, you know, the card group, we have the card. So which means this is going to be like a wrapper around this. So I tend to use names like this, you know, group or maybe wrapper, right? Or maybe holder. So it does, uh, you know, very, just have to think um, in a very structural way, right? So I'm going to call this a uh, group. So we have that group and uh, very simple, that group is going to simply give us, a, it's going to simply be a flex. Um, we're going to have it display a flex and uh, we're going to wrap it uh, with flex wrap. Uh, wrap just like this and uh, you know we'll just have uh, the card itself uh, which would have uh, a flex basis of let's say 300 pixels right and then uh, we have like a background color of uh, yellow and let's say the height is also 300 pixels okay so basically you see what we have we have three cards right um let's put some space in there so that we can really see this uh, you know the space in between so we have three cards and of course you know it's uh, automatically uh, you know like responsive is adjusting right it's adjusting to um, you know the, the size we have here okay so um i'm going to i'm going to try my best to uh, let me see so i'm trying to see if i can just reduce this so that we can have okay good so you see now we have enough space this is basically we're using this size uh, 1,150, you know, for the width and the height. Uh, basically, what I'm going to set right now, uh, you need to understand that uh, different devices, you know, when selected uh, here, would give you, uh, you know, different, you know, a different size, right? A different size, of course, the dimension. You know, you have a different dimension. So if you're using a Pixel 5, for example, you know, uh, this is what you get, you know, as your dimension, right? If you're using, um, you know, an iPhone, you know, you see the dimension for the SE, iPhone SR, right? So iPhone 12 Pro, uh, what you have to do when trying to build or create something responsive, you have to think uh, of, um, you know, the, the, the size that would fit in for multiple devices, right? You can choose to say, okay, I want to implement something different, you know, when it's on, um, uh, when it's on a tablet, right? Maybe like uh, uh, a seven inch device. I, I don't know if the Surface Pro 7 is actually seven inch, but we have some specific, uh, you know, standards that you can choose to work with. For example, most mobile devices would fall under um, the item of, of uh, you know, we we'll call it max width. So you can say, okay, when is on mobile? Right now, I'm going to take off two items from here. So we are just left with a single item, right? And uh, let me zoom in. Let me zoom in once again to 100%. I think that is too much, 75%. Okay. So you can say, when I am on, um, when I am on a mobile view. Uh, I want this box to have, uh, I want this box to fill the entire screen, right? When I'm on a mobile view, I want this box to fill the entire screen. When I'm on a desktop view, 
I want it to have 300 by 300 pixels. So now, you know, we're on a desktop view, look at the dimension. Uh, basically, we see how that, you know, 300 by 300 pixel. How do you work with a media query? All right, so simply put, you have the media, uh, which is this, this, this syntax you see here, and you have the screen size that would come in here. And within the block, you can then, you know, style, uh, you can then work on the properties of that particular class or you know that particular uh, CSS uh, selector, right? It can be a class, it can be an ID, you know, it can be um, you know a direct element, or it can also be the universal selector. So uh, let's work with the class that we are already working with right now. And now I'm going to say max width. So let's let's work with max width. I will explain max width and mean width to you. Uh, I'm going to work with seven sixty pixels, which is uh, you know kind of a standard to say uh, any device that uh, you know has a maximum width of 768 pixel i want this to appear you know in this fashion you know in that particular device and a quick example here is i can say give me a width of 100 percent let's use a dw and a height of uh, 100 dh so if i refresh this now see what is going to happen when i move this down i see what i see what happened there so um the width did not change i would, I would tell you why the width did not change basically because we have uh, a flex basis right here right so uh, let's let's just assume we don't have that uh, flex basis um so you see what we have uh, but the flex basis need to be there so before it can work on the uh, you know on the mobile or you can simply use a width right so let's assume we're not working with the flex basis right now we don't care about the flex basis on every other screen this is what you have right and when you get to that uh, you know that screen size that you specified we said 768 so look at the size right here you know, take a look at this size, what you're seeing here. Okay, so um, when I go down, when I pass 768, you see 76, so this is 769, it comes back to normal, back one step, 768, it fills the screen. So once you are exceeding, you know, once you are within the, uh, you know, the range of that max with 768, give me 100 VH, 100 VW, right? You've automatically adjusted the responsiveness or the display or the look of this item on a different viewport or on a different screen, right? And um, yeah, you can also adjust. So we can even work on multiple. So let, let me show you. So now we can say, okay, uh, when you are on this screen size, uh, instead of giving me yellow, give me give me green, right? That's a very bad color anyways, but yeah, let's see. So now you see we have green, now we have yellow, right? So you are able to adjust these properties based on that particular uh, you know screen size. I'm simply going to, um, Work with a different media query here, and I'm going to say uh, when you are probably around the range of 2000, uh, which is not a standard, but you know, I'm just trying to you know, show you something. So we have blue, and we don't we probably don't need these options, right? Um, let's also change this uh, value. Uh, let's make everything default. Uh, we'll just work on adjusting the colors only, right? So we have uh, this as the default. Uh, you know, by default, this is um, this is yellow, right? When it gets to a thousand, you know, look at look at the size. See what we have. We get down again. So this is going to change. Oh yeah. So and there's a reason why this did not change. Uh, I'm going to move this. Let's move this. So oh sorry, I keep making that mistake. You know, pressing that short box. Okay, so let's refresh. Let's take it back up. All right. So now you see. Okay, so you need to understand that the, the arrangement or the structure, you know, the position where you put things would also matter, right? That was the reason why the other item did not change. Um, so you have to make sure you structure these uh, things properly because uh, the browser would read your CSS style from the top. And I keep I keep trying to avoid using from the top to the bottom, but basically, uh, you know, from the top here uh, down to the end. So um, you see, we have yellow, we have blue, we have green, right? So you can keep making this adjustment. Now this is uh, working with your responsive, um, uh, you know, media query. Uh, a styling right so basically we're using media queries here and you can apply this to text as well so uh, let's say we have a text in here and this is like a paragraph and then uh, you know we have a uh, hello world uh you know hello world or let's say hello uh, x okay if i spell that correctly uh admits all right so i'm going to refresh so now you see we have that item quite small in there i'm simply going to say um we're going to style the card and the P, you know, directly after the card or directly within the card. So I'm going to say we have a font size of, uh, you know, uh, 100 px. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, and we're going to center this item right now. So let's quickly just say um, display 
uh, grid, uh, place items, place items. Okay. Enter, okay. Uh, center, center. All right. So you see that this is what we have right now. When we start adjusting, this will change. But it will get to that stage where, you know, uh, it's uh, so it's basically adjustable uh, at this stage because we're currently using the flex for the parent, right? Um, but you might say you want to probably change the size as you adjust this thing, right? So let's say by default, you have a font weight of um, uh, 800 or 900, I think that's the highest option we have there. So I'm going to refresh. This is very bold, right? And um, uh, yeah, so this is, this is bold. Um, when we start adjusting this stuff, you know, when we get to like, um, you know, this, uh, this blue stage, which is the uh, max width of uh, a thousand, uh, remember, you can also change this to mean width, right? You can decide to go the other way around. So it's just the way it's just the way you think about it. Now we are saying anything that's you know is within that context, within that size of a hundred, a, a, a thousand px, give us blue, right? You can do the whole thing, uh, you know, with a reverse. Or some people will say, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> some people will say the max width and uh, I think it's and right. I don't know. Let's see. And mean width. I'm going to try to verify this. Um, okay, so I don't think it's and. Uh, so I'm quickly going to, yeah, let's do that here. Uh, media query, max width and mean width. Okay, so just trying to see. Um, okay, so it has to be in two, uh, in two brackets, so just like this. Okay, so that's where I was making the mistake. So, so you can actually work with that kind of range, right? Hand. So the max width and the mean width. Um, you know, I most times, I most times just uh, you know try as much as possible to work with. Um, so someone is saying already dropped it. Are you referring to the Discord server? Ah, okay, okay, we'll check that. Okay, so um, yeah, looking at what we have right now, you know, I'm just showing you. You can definitely work with like you know uh, a range, you know, so you can say. From seven six eight and you know a uh, thousand uh, two hundred or so, right? You can definitely work with a range like that. So let's uh, let's proceed. Uh, when you get to this uh, particular screen, you want to change the, uh, the font size and maybe the font weight as well. So uh, what you just have to do is to move this item you know, just like this in here, and now you're working with the font size, maybe fifty, right? Maybe fifty and maybe a font weight of five hundred. Uh, you can even choose to change the color, right? Because that is a blue color, so we can work with a uh, white here. And I think that would make sense. So if we refresh now, you see this has uh, you know, adjusted, LOL, LOL. So you can also choose to adjust that again um, when you get to that mobile uh, size, right? So you can say, okay, give me white, uh, you know, give me 30, or let's leave this as 50, or 50, and this should be like maybe 70. Okay. So uh, it should be like 100, I don't know, but I believe you get the point, right? So you see we're able to move you know, with different sizes, right, just like that. So basically that's how you work with media queries. It's not something really complex, but uh, as you keep building, you know, like better layouts, you need to understand that uh, you just have to understand the screen size, you know, that you want to make that adjustment um, um, to, right? And you have to reference that screen size uh, by using the max width or the min width. Um, Okay, so that is it for media query. Uh, the next thing I can see on our list was supposed to quickly talk about JavaScript, but let me take a quick look at um, uh, what AJ Victor dropped on the. So is, is this? So what, what is your question? Let me let me go back to the chat. What is your question exactly, Victor? So do you understand what I have explained so far, Emmanuel? Let me know in the chat if you do. Um, so AJ Victor, you said box model and um, um, okay. So if you're talking about the box model, can, can you please you know, explain uh, what is your question exactly, right? Uh, is it that you don't understand the box model? If you don't understand the box model, maybe you can check out the previous videos we have on the server, right? And I think uh, you can watch them. Um, I think when we were talking about CSS, I explained the box model. I think I that video should be enough. Uh, is this AJ Victor or this is a different person? I think. Okay. Victor, do you understand? Uh, Victor, can you check out those videos or do you have a different question as regards what you're showing me? Do you want me to implement this? So you 
see how I implement that. Well, what, what do you want me to do exactly? Please, you're, you're, you're taking time. Uh, I'll move on to the next. Uh, uh, Victor, are you the one using the same account, uh, Victor? Pelu okay, okay. I'm surprised. So you're currently using two accounts. Okay, fine. Um, we just have a 1224. Um, 1224, okay, all right. So um, let's see. Okay, fine. So what I'm simply going to do, uh, just in case you need this file, I'm going to first zip this file up. I'm going to call it media query. Okay, so I'll share that with you. So I'm going to take off everything we have here and uh, I'm simply going to create a div. I'm going to call that uh, uh, hero, right? As a hero section, uh, a separate div in here. And I'll call that uh, flex. Uh, or a flex wrapper. I don't know, maybe I can just call that a wrapper. So uh, basically I'm trying to, you know, look at what we have. Uh, what is this called again? Okay, so I'm going to put this on a different screen so I can easily, you know, look at it and uh, you know, be faster. I don't have that image, but uh, I, I will just create like a box to um, describe the image, if you get what I mean. So let us close this for now, refresh. I need to save this first, refresh. Okay, so this is empty. And uh, what I'm simply going to do right now is, of course, uh, the style, uh, the style just like this. And I'm going to have a hero um, display uh, flex. I, I love to use grid for this as, uh, as well. Grid would work perfectly, okay? Um, Okay, so display flex, and I'm simply going to say the items we have in here, you know, two items. The first one is going to be the, um, you know, the description or probably the detail, let's call that detail. And uh, the second one can just be an image or it can be a div with an image inside, it's, it's up to you. So uh, I'm going to use a div and I'm going to call this a rectangle because I don't want to bring in a rectangle here, right? So um, for the rectangle, Let's let's make sure we have so we have the hero we have the hero wrapper right so let's do that hero uh, wrapper okay so I think the the wrapper should even be a uh, you know, flex item and the hero should just probably give us like a height of uh, seventy bh you know this is on the web view uh, so in order to really picture this thing I'm going to be using background colors to show you um, yeah, let's just do it this way. So let's save this, let's refresh it. So we have this stuff right now. Uh, then the, the flex we have in here is the wrapper, right? And inside the wrapper, we have detail and rectangle. So let's just do that um, detail, right? Which is another class. And, oh, a mistake again. Rectangle, <laughs> sorry about that. So height, I'm going to simply say 300 pp, uh, px, uh, width, uh, 300 px. And then I'm going to just simply put this same color in here. Uh, then drop this one a little bit. We're going to take off this color before the end of the day, anyways. So if I refresh, you see we have that item here, right? Good. Now within the detail, we have uh, I can see we have like we have a button, we have the, you know, I can use H1, then the last item can be A, right? You know, the A tag, the anchor tag. So I'm going to simply create the button, I'm going to use uh, H1, and finally I'm going to put uh, the anchor tag. Uh, now there's nothing here, okay. Just assuming, so for the text, redefining the uh, shopping uh, experience for an online retail, that's not how to spell online, retail uh, shoe store. All right. So uh, we're working on this project together. So my assumption is you're going to pay me. Okay, so now you see we have this text and we have you know, this other item you know, by the side uh, because basically we just need to say, uh, you know, flex uh, five contents. Uh, let's do space, space between, okay? So if I refresh now, uh, this is already having that uh, space between. I'm just going to put it out here so we can see it better. Um, and yeah, let's, let's work with it this way. So you see we have that item right here, space between, but uh, in order to ensure that everything you know, looks proper, I am simply uh, going to put, um, yeah, I'm simply going to uh, set a, width, a, a base size for this you know, detail item right here. So we're going to do that with flex basis, remember? So we have like the flex uh, basis. Uh, let's just use uh, 500px and um, refresh. 
uh, okay, so flex basis would of course you know adjust this item. Um, yeah, so maybe what I would what I should do, okay, so maybe what I should do is uh, you know set that flex basis for uh, all the items, all the divs. You know, I just want to make it look like this. Okay. Probably if we don't have enough time, I would have love to also show you how to achieve something like this using grid. Grid might be uh, you know faster, but when it comes to like the mobile view, um, flex would uh, make it easier for you to even you know understand what you're doing. So for the detail, I'm simply going to set a width of uh, you know let's use 500 pixels. So you see what's going to happen here. This item is going to you know come short just like this, right? And then the next thing you want to do uh, for the button is um, I think what you have there is case to the one. So I don't even think that's a button. I'm not sure if that's a button, but I'm going to use the button. So I'm going to say case to the one. Uh, everything should be captured later. So all we can do is uh, you know style that button. It's currently inside the detail. So I'm simply going to style that uh, like this. I'm going to say we have um, border none, right? Then border um, one px solid black. I'm going to drop that black, and I'm just trying to look at what you have there. Uh, I'm going to put a padding of uh, 20 px and i'm going to say a uh, text transform to uppercase everything in there so if i refresh is what um that is not working just yet so hero wrapper detail and uh, button hero wrapper detail and button okay did i save that properly so this is detail and this is detail detail let's see Hope I'm not making any mistake. Um, oh yeah, I was making a mistake all this while. So it's detail, okay, good. So this is what I have right now. And um, yeah, there was a spelling error there, okay? So padding, let's just make this 10, uh, border radius, I'm just going to use pop x. Um, yeah, so now let's say this, this is what you have, right? Just an example of what you have, okay? So uh, I'm also going to use something similar to this for the color. All right, so we have this right now. And then for the text, I, I don't know your font type, obviously, but I'm just simply going to use a uh, font family of the printer, you know, because I think I have Inter on my laptop. I'm not sure. I don't. Poppins. I think I do. Oh, amazing. Don't. Um, I'm sorry. Okay, so let's just let's just stick to this. All right, so you know you can set those margin bottom and all those stuff. Before we even do that, maybe we should just go ahead for the flex item. I'm just simply going to say uh, align item center, and uh, basically what that is going to do is position this item properly in the center for you. Okay, um, yeah, and maybe I don't necessarily need to do this. I just want to leave it this way. Uh, finally, maybe I might want to you know have a section within the heroes, and I can use the section to set uh, you know like the margin on both ends. Uh, that is not something compulsory. It's not even part of what I'm, yeah. So I have section, and I can just say I have a width of like eighty percent, and I you know margin zero auto to position that properly in the center. And you know this is what I have right now. So um, of course this text is not you know probably big enough uh, as compared to what you have in there. You know, and I'm using uh, H1, right? So how do I make that? Uh, how do I fix that up? So I can just copy these. Uh, you know, put an H1, and then I can just say font size, uh, let's say 40 px. Uh, maybe that is, mm, uh, yeah. So of course you can, um, yeah, you can choose to play around with this at the end of the day. But I'm just simply going to, you know, leave this at uh, understood. Okay, good, good, good. All right. So since you understand that, um, yeah, you can always you can always adjust this. Uh, you know, follow the follow the spec on that particular uh, you know design. Uh, file that you have in there. I think it will always make it better. Then for this second div that we call the rectangle, you know, you can also uh, adjust this so it can probably, you know, come closer. Uh, and finally, you have your text. So let's let's put in the, uh, the anchor we have right at the bottom there. So um, I think this. Do, do you understand this so far? I think that that is fine. You know, when it comes to responsiveness as well um, for the text. I think what you have there is coming soon. Everything upper, so text uh, transform, you know, upper case, uh, upper case, and uh, I'm also going to just simply use this as the, <clears throat> and I'm also going to make it. I think there's an underlining stuff there, so text decoration, uh, underline, right? And I will just come in here and uh, put the text as uh, coming soon. 
right? So if I refresh this, um, this is what I have. So it's left for you to put a level of uh, margin you want in there and that is all, right? So uh, the reason why I was setting the, uh, the, the flex basis is uh, because we want this to be responsive as well. Right now you see we don't have any uh, level of responsiveness. So uh, in here, I can just put a gap, you know, like 40 pixels so that it doesn't really get that close. Uh, go back, refresh. So you see, it doesn't really get that close. And then I can say when you get to um, flex wrap, wrap at uh, probably 300, okay. Let's wrap at 300. So, you know, when you get to uh, that, is not working. And let's see why this is not working. So, the wrapper, you know, is uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's the wrong place. So, this is a, a flex wrap wrap, right? Then flex basis, 300 pixels. Uh, yeah, so you can also use grid to do this. I mean, uh, you can definitely use grid. So, you see, I have. Uh, that responsive view automatically and you can say okay when i'm on the responsive view instead of this item you know instead of this item giving me this uh, 700 bh on the responsive view you know at media max width uh, seven uh, six eight pixels you know i just want you to be a hundred percent you know complete right a hundred percent uh when you're on the mobile so you see that background fills the whole thing and this picture you know this picture can then change you know, um, when I'm on the mobile view as well. So let's move this to the bottom uh, for the picture, which is basically this rectangle right here. You know, on the mobile view, I want this particular uh, picture to be um, the width of 100% uh, as well. So you see, you automatically, uh, what something went uh, height with 500, 100%. Okay, so let's see something. Um, Uh, okay, so I think, okay, I think probably that's a hundred percent already. Uh huh. Oh, no, it's not a hundred percent yet. So I'm currently looking at this, uh, let's see, important. Um, okay, so this is not, this is not working on the mobile, um, on the responsive view just yet. So we'll have to figure out uh, why, why it's not working yet. So. I have that rectangle. Hmm, okay. So this is what okay, this is what I have for the rectangle, and this is exactly what I have in here. Correct. Okay, can I just see? Is it working in the first place? Uh okay, so this is not ah uh, okay. So this is basically not working here. Hero wrapper rectangle. I'm a bit I'm a bit surprised why it is not um a bit surprised why it is not working in there so i'm just testing to see uh-huh okay so if this is working properly here and i'm currently working with the max suites oh okay okay something was wrong uh, something was wrong somewhere let's refresh save try that again so this time around, let's see if it would work. Okay, all right. So there was a mistake from my end, obviously. Um, okay, so uh, yeah. So the benefit of uh, probably using the um, flex at times is, uh, is is easy for you to just say, okay, when I'm on uh, when I'm on the mobile, you know, uh, change the direction of this thing, right? You can do that. So you can say when I'm on mobile, uh, flex direction, you know, row reverse. Uh, I think that would, um, okay. Uh, I don't know, do we have column reverse? Yeah, so column reverse, you see, I'm able to just swap the whole thing, right? I'm able to swap the whole thing, but you still have to make some adjustments. You still have to make some adjustments. So I have an error somewhere around here. So you have to ensure that you, um, you, uh, you know, you have to ensure that this is uh, okay. Yeah, you have to ensure that this is looking okay. I think the problem was coming from the percentage thing. Um, okay, yeah, so I, I would leave this to you, but I believe you get the point. You know, you can, you can definitely make that adjustment. Let's not waste too much time again. Uh, but yeah, you can always do the row reverse thing, column reverse thing to always swap, you know, what it looks like. 
Um, yeah, our, our initial item went off. You know, I would explain why that uh, item went off. Uh, so basically, basically the problem, the, the thing we are seeing here is um, um, on the desktop view, we should have, uh, we should have this, okay? Let's say the wrapper, the rectangle. Well, I'm simply going to go back to the desktop view. Okay, so that item is basically still there. Yeah, so that item is basically still there. So um, yeah, I believe I believe you you get the points. You know, that I'm trying to I'm trying to show you here. So you can always do you know just adjustments. You know, add your pictures. Uh, this item is no longer. It's obviously not working well because I added a section right, uh, which is this. Uh, what I'm showing you is this initial um, 500 pixels here. You know, obviously it is not working. I think that's this guy, right? Yeah. So that, that was the initial issue. That's why you see you have too much spaces. So you definitely would have to um, adjust this. And uh, I have that um, size. I have that initial size because I wanted this guy. I wanted this guy to really, you know, stay within its boundary, right? I wanted this guy to stay within its boundary. But you can also decide to, you know, instead move the uh, width you have here into this place, you know, and allow that width to do the job, right? So you see, allow that width to do the job. All right, so basically, uh, I think that is it. So a quick one. Uh, I hope you uh, understood. So someone is saying, I think you can make you can make it a heading, um, a heading text and style appropriately uh, using CSS values like background border. Okay, so I don't know if uh, that is uh, for me because that that is currently uh, on Discord. So I would continue with uh, what we're supposed to just quickly go through. Um, if you want this. If you want this, um, so someone is saying, let me see, there's a new message. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's quickly move on to the uh, JavaScript um, stuff I have for you. So I have my source code, JavaScript for beginners. Okay. Go to JavaScript. All right. So, um, you know, basically, I believe you understand some of the basic defaults, right? Some of the basic, uh, you know, stuff um, uh, in JavaScript, like how to create a variable, right? You know, how to work with, uh, uh, how to do basic operations, you know, like uh, variable, variable.js. So you have like, um, you know, let, let A equals five, you know, let B equals 10, you know, um, let C uh, equals A plus B and, um, the console the log c so these are just some of the basic things that of course i expect you know so i'm not going to really touch uh, except you have questions you know ask your questions right so uh, if i do a uh, node variable right so you have 15 okay so uh, let's leave variables for now let's just start uh, with um, with functions you know or let's let's start with the control flow so you know you have the if else statement right uh, if c uh, equals and the sign you're seeing here basically uh, uh, checks for we're checking for uh, equality uh, in value and type right so we're trying to make sure that uh, the uh, you know the, the value and the type you know is equal to uh, uh, you know what we have here so uh, you know if c is equals 15 it means if the data type is actually a number and if the value is 15 uh, because basically you know 15 is equals to 15 right um, yeah if you do something like this right so this is equal to this uh in terms of value so this checks for value uh but this checks for both the value and the type okay so um this is just a very simple if statement you know if c is equals this do this else do that right and you can also have you know if this equals that uh do this else if this equals that right so you see you are able to check for multiple conditions before you finally arrive at else okay and uh, this is for uh, conditionals uh, basically uh, use a uh, control flow, sorry, uh, basically working with uh, the if statement, right? Of course, you are checking for conditions. Uh, you also have the switch statement um, where you have like a particular value, like result equals C, and you're trying to switch different cases, you know, to verify um, what the value would come, you know, would end up, you know, um, yeah, just what, what, you would, uh, what you would end up having as the result. So um, a, re a realistic example is, uh, you know, you are expecting something here. You don't know what you're expecting yet. So uh, let's say we have a function to get back, right? So you have a function, you're expecting something, but you don't know what it is. Um, okay, so I think I just, <laughs> sorry about that. So that should be a function get back. 
and uh, you know we didn't get back we're going to pass in the value so i'm just simply going to pass in 10 and i say okay uh if um uh if so let, let's say we have grid right so we're, we're doing like a result computation system also we have grid and here we have the value of that grid so let's say i score 50 and i say if grid uh is uh, less than or equal to 50 um return f right uh, as a string uh else you know keep making this mistake is else return a so you know just yeah so just uh, so this is going to give us f obviously we don't have a case for f so i'm going to uh, add a case for f uh, and i'm going to add this case and say you failed or that was so failed okay so let us um take this off so i'm going i'm going to run i'm going to execute this and let's see if we're going to have an error uh do we have any 50 no, it's on a so this would be a okay fine so let's do uh node control flow control flow slash uh, switch okay so you see we have failed right basically uh, the reason for that is because we call this function we pass in a value and within the value uh we have 50 so what if we have like 51 right above 50 uh what do we get here we get distinction because you know our, our, our calculation or computation uh is definitely uh biased but i believe you get the point right so you are able to pass this function the result of this function would come in here right so in, in this case it's going to be a right um <clears throat> And instead of doing the if else, if else, if else in here, you know, you can then use a switch case to select uh, whatever value, whatever result this person has. Uh, this is your grade. This is what you, you know, what you get from here. So that is for the switch statement. Uh, the ternary operator is, uh, you know, simply um, uh, a shorthand. The way you write, uh, you know, an if condition, uh, but it's a shorthand. Uh, so you can use the ternary operator to do that, right? So that's what you have right here. And um, yeah, so basically, uh what you're checking for um yeah so basically what you're checking for sorry sorry about that basically what you're checking for is uh, you know you're trying to perform a very simple condition to say okay if the age is greater than or equal 16 you know do this so this is kind of like the true uh the true t uh, case and this is the false case so uh you have a statement uh, let's call it the condition and then you know you have the um uh truth is uh, truth or false you know so something like this so you have the condition and you're checking you know if this is correct give me this else give me that right uh yeah so if i run this code of course you should know what the value would, uh, would be so if i say ternary operator so you see you can drive uh because uh, the guy is actually greater than you know the expectation or the expected age here um if we drop this down to 15 course you cannot drive so um if you have any question ask so these are some of the control flows we have here then let's talk about uh, let's talk about functions uh, i think functions is a bit uh, let's talk about loops so we have different types of loop we have the, the do while loop right we have the uh, for loop and then we have the uh, while loop right and uh, the for loop is basically you know used for uh, iteration and then um, uh, there are other types of you know way, there are other ways to look especially when you're looking through objects we have things like for in loop you know for off loop we're not going to talk about that uh, right now this is a very simple straightforward for loop and this is what the syntax looks like so first off you know you have your index you know initialize your index you have the uh, the length so you're going to initialize or iterate you're going to iterate through a particular item that has a length so a list you know or an object you know this this items uh, uh objects that you can uh, iterate through or iterate through um then you have the index plus plus which will basically increase the count of the of the uh you know of the index right and uh you know while that's uh while you are still less than that length you know you can you know perform some operations in here and also uh work with the uh, index in your operation so basically what we're doing here is we're just trying to print out all the items here you know to the console so if i say uh, node loop slash for loop you know this is going to print out all the items we have in here okay um and we can just say let array item two for example equals uh one two three four five you know so instead of doing this now we can say array item two you know um let's see so 
you can just say array item two plus okay yeah let's just do this way plus plus two okay so basically what's going to happen here you know you're going to add two to every single value so this is going to be three this is going to be four this is going to be five you know just like that okay so that's a different example and uh, i hope you're getting you're, you're following me uh the do while loop right is always actually different and i i have you know um a description you know so if this would execute at least once before checking the condition so we're going to do this while this right so this is going to execute once before checking for that condition and it will then follow up with the condition uh, to perform the rest of the operation right and that's the basic difference you know, between the uh, do while loop and the for loop um, we also have the while you know so this is saying okay while this so this is going to execute if the condition is met right so while this then you know this would happen so if this condition is not true, then this would not happen, okay? And uh, yeah, I'm going to send this file to you after this session. So you have, um, let's talk about functions. So basically, a uh, function is uh, simply like a unit uh, or a block of code that you can reuse, uh, and you expect it to perform a particular operation or to you know, um, uh, give you like a specific functionality to um, you know, solve a particular problem or a particular task at hand. Okay, so uh, people keep getting this confused. What is the difference between um, you know, the, the, the function, the module, you know, package and all that. So simply, this is an example of a function, right? When you have multiple functions in here, okay, so sorry about that. You have multiple functions in here. Um, and then you, know, you, you, you have, uh, so, so for example, this particular file right now is referred to as a module. A module basically you know, contains, um, you know, uh, uh, set of functions or set of uh, you know uh, functionalities that are uh, you know related right logically related so uh, let's say you have like um, uh, this file is performing things like sign up sign in you know those kind of you know forgot password and then the name of this file is user this can be referred to as user module because it contains all the functionality for sign up uh, sign in forgot password you know stuff like that um, so basically it is a function and you know the file itself is a module then a package is basically, uh, you know, when you have like a folder here that contains a related set of modules, right? So the package wraps those modules together and you can reuse those modules. In, inside those modules, you have functions. So it's kind of like in layers, right? You have um, you have the, the function, you know, then you have the, um, the modules sitting right on top of it because the file itself is a module. Then you have a package, which can be a collection of multiple modules. And then you have a library, which of course can be collection of multiple packages performing multiple things you know but they are grouped together uh, in a way that you can reason uh, you can reason you can reason with okay so that is basically how uh, the flow or how the uh, hierarchy looks like um so that is this is for function right then uh, you can actually write a function within a function and i have an example here so you can you know call this function inside this other function and then reuse the value to you know get maybe like a final return statement so you can have multiple functions you know group together right you can have another function in here uh, we can call this a get value right you can even have a function inside this other function so we can, it has to be before the return statement though so we can have another function uh, hello so this is looking more complex so that's why i won't advise that you do things this way i'm sure you are able to reason about just in case you see something like that don't be confused you can have functions inside other functions okay um, then yeah, so this is for parameters and uh, parameters can have a default value just in case uh, a value is not passed, you can work with the default, right? So this is the default parameter. Uh, these are your parameters. And when you call it, we refer to that as arguments, right? So um, sometimes you can see people using it interchangeably. It, does, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so when you call it, um, it, you will refer to it as arguments. When you are creating it, you know, we'll call it the parameters. Okay, so arrow functions. Uh, arrow functions are, you know, um, Oh, it also works like you know a shorthand uh, because uh, you can basically use an arrow function to perform you know something like uh, const uh, get age right and then you have um, return uh, I think this should be let's see you can do something like this right so return um, let's return to okay so I think something I'm probably making a mistake somewhere uh, I will try to figure this out uh right now so let's see let's see something so we have this arrow function um we have age uh oh, okay 
So cost greeting equals this equals that. So I'm trying not to even put in the braces. You know, I believe I am making a mistake here because you can definitely. So yeah, I mean, you can you can check. I believe most of you already know what I'm trying to do. Um, but of course, I'm quickly going to do um, a function. So I have this library. I have this a plugin called the Code Grepper. Uh, I think yeah, Code Grepper can just give me like a quick example right here. Um, okay, so Code Grepper is not giving me the example here because I'm on a private tab, right? So, but you can install this. You know, you will definitely need this. I'm opening a regular. Yeah, I'm going to do a quick search. So you see, this is a regular. Um, yeah. So I think this is an example of what I was about to show you. Uh, but it's very similar to what I did. So did I make a mistake in the in my spelling? Return. That is strange. Okay. Okay. So, uh huh. So what's wrong? So I think probably. Yeah. So uh, I think the code was actually right, but maybe it's um. Uh, something is probably wrong somewhere. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm I'm really surprised why. Yeah, so we we will have you know examples just like this. Uh, okay, so probably it was because of the return statement, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I guess it's because of but the return statement should work as well because I've actually tried this multiple times. But anyways, you get the point. You can actually you know write um, a function that will work this way. So I can say at three, this is actually a function. I can put the numbers I want. Um, uh huh. And I can then you know probably even console the blog this item right here. Okay. So I can call add three and it will perform this operation for me. So uh, you can you can use it to write you know simple functions. Um, one thing you should always remember is um, uh, anything, when you are working with an arrow function, especially within an object, uh, sometimes uh, you have to be careful with uh, you know, what you expect um, at the end of the day, like uh, this does not really have its own this context. So there's something called this. Uh, for, the, for you guys, front end guys, um, uh, when working with uh, HTML and JavaScript, right, you would uh, have what you call window, the window object. For Node.js, we'll have uh, the global object, uh, but um, yeah, if you're using this in an arrow function, especially on the front end, you need to understand that this is going to be referring to uh, what we call the global disk, which most times would be the window object. So just in case you have an object, right? You have an object, this is a JavaScript object user, for example. So we have a let user you know, equals uh, you know, name, and uh, this name is, let's say, uh, Bob, right? Then you have um, grids, right? Uh, and then you probably, choose to do uh, something like this. Uh, this is definitely wrong. I'm guessing this is wrong. Uh, this is wrong. Oh yeah, so that was wrong. Okay, so if you call this dot name, let's see what happens if you try to um, call this, you know, just to make you understand what I'm trying to explain. Uh, I'm going to take this off for now. So we just console log this item, this arrow function. So if I call, um, user the grids uh, and I do node uh, functions and I say arrow function. You see we have undefined, right? We have undefined because this is not recognized in here, except you have uh, a different name here, which is uh, like Michael, but this is probably still not going to work. So let's see if we have this dot name. Uh, yeah, so the same undefined because uh, this is actually going to refer to, you know, when you have like, you know, name outside, um, you know, outside the scope of this item. So uh, this is still not working. Um, why is this not working? Okay, so let's see. Um, hmm. So this dot name, I don't know, let's see, what name. Okay, so this is still not working. Uh, so I believe I'm probably making a mistake here. What if we just call username directly? Yeah, and that is working. Uh, and also Michael is working. So I'm probably making a mistake here because uh, definitely within a, within within the arrow function, I can use um, I can use. So it says name is not undefined because it does not have you know like direct access to this. 
but uh, I can use the this to this uh, to reference. Um, I can use this to reference what I have. Uh, yeah, so I'm making a mistake here. Uh, okay, so I'm looking at the chat. Can someone figure out? So someone is still asking this arrow means what, sir? It's just a way, it's just a pattern, you know, in JavaScript, you know, you're actually creating a function. The difference is that it's not the regular function you're creating that looks like this. You know, the regular function can work with this dot username and uh, you know, you would have this Bob, right? But uh, within the arrow function, uh, you can't assess uh, using this. Um, yeah, you can't really assess using, using this. Uh, there's a way to assess this uh, item though. Um, I think I'm just making a mistake and I'm not getting it here. So I'm quickly going to check out objects so that we can figure that out together. So this is a JavaScript object and um, let's take a look at this. Okay, these are, uh, uh, you know, uh, constructor functions would we'll, we'll get to, you know, work with that. Uh, this dot username you know, giving us this. Okay, so I don't think I have an example in here where I explained how you should, um, you know, work with the arrow. Um, okay, so I don't think I, I don't think I have that example. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to um, you know explain that uh, to you later. But of course, I am the one making the mistake uh, in this code base. Uh, basically, uh, you have username Bob. You know, you can you should. Uh, be able to assess, I don't know, user dot this. I'm surprised why. Okay, so user dot this is working. Um, because we're referencing user dot the name, right? So that is working. Um, yeah, but I believe there's a different way I can assess this without you know referencing the user. Anyways, I'll do that research and get back to you on that. So you can also remind me. Uh, but you you need to understand that when you're using the arrow function, this you know keyword would not reference what you have within the object right it won't work so um just in case you find yourself making that mistake uh okay so we have anonymous functions you know functions that you don't really need to execute it would uh, execute itself and that is what it looks like right so uh, when i call the file uh, anonymous function you know it triggers this function even if i don't have a place calling this function and the function does not have a name right that's why it's anonymous Right, it does not have a name. Um, yeah, so there are other things in here. Uh, I want you to ensure, and, and we have videos explaining these things. So if you don't know these things, it means we did not go through the videos completely, right? I taught everything here, you know, recorded session. Someone was telling me we only have two videos on JavaScript. Please check the class resources, ask your friends in the room and they can provide you with some of those materials, right? We explained all these operators, you know, and I want you to understand this well, uh, because, um, yeah, you would need to, this would help you when you start working with JavaScript in your, um, in your um, code base. Um, I think someone also explained the JavaScript ES6 classes to you. Um, if you are finding it difficult to understand what you did in that session, uh, go through, uh, I think we have, um, oh, okay. So I think uh, the ES6 class, uh, I taught uh, the backend class in a different workshop. I would add that to this set of files uh, and I would share that with you. Uh, but if you have questions as regards ESS class, the difference is that uh, you are no longer using the, uh, the um, constructor functions, right? You're no longer using the constructor functions. Uh, so under the objects here, you're no longer using the constructor function to create a class uh, or to model your objects. Instead, you're using the, um, you know, the class, uh, you know, this is basically uh, you know, what we call a syntactic uh, sugar that uh, is probably going to end up giving you this, right? Uh, this is the uh, previous way to do it, but this is, the more, this is the modern way to do it, you know, where you can now have your constructor you know, and all those stuff you can do inheritance and things like that. And this, would, this is very important. It's very important to understand the assist classes. Um, but I would, uh, I would, um, I would probably, I'll probably uh, explain this to you you know in a different session because we've exhausted our one hour um you know time span so i believe you uh, let me know in the chat if you really learned something from here i would share this with you uh you know we also have like the module thing yeah i would i would, I would share this with you and if you have any questions you can ask me uh you know in the chats in the chat room um yeah all right so that is all have a wonderful day, have a productive day, and uh, I'll see you in the next class.
Okay. So bye.